Welcome back to Face the State on this Sunday morning. We are joined now by the Congresswoman from the third district in our state, Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro, the senior member of our congressional mm -hmm. delegation now in your right. 13th term? This is uh, my 15th term. 15th term. term. Yeah, I've lost count. But yes. uh, welcome back to the program. Nine Always... years. Next year will be 30. And 30, 30, years. Now, 30 years. Is that a record mm -hmm. in Connecticut history? You know? uh, I think so. It, it Really, I thought, you know, I mean, Bob Jimo was the longest mm -hmm. serving uh, member, and he served... Um, uh, as con a congressman from the third district, but I've served longer than he has. I'm not sure how many years Nancy Johnson served, to tell you the truth. She we'll was have there to a get on time. that. Yeah. Some viewer is going to tweet us right now because right. tell us. Right. Our, we have very intelligent right. viewers, and someone out there knows the mm -hmm. answer to that. Let's talk about what you've been doing in Washington lately, and I know that you've been <laughs> working on immigration lately in terms of because you've visited uh, some of these right. areas where the immigrants are coming in. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, first of all, I mean, my committee, uh, I now chair, which I am so excited about because now that we're in the majority. Majority. I chair the uh, Appropriations Committee on Labor, Education, uh, and Health Care. And part of our jurisdiction is the Unaccompanied Children's uh, Program. Those are the youngsters who come uh, to the United States uh, by themselves. Uh, and uh, by law, we have to house uh, these children and care for them. Uh, and they're in our custody, if you will, until they uh, get an opportunity either to be placed or maybe some of them even are returned home. Nevertheless, I went to visit a homestead, uh, which is in Florida, and it's labeled an influx facility. What does that mean, Dennis? Most of the, uh, the uh, shelters for these children are small, residential, they're permanent, they have a, a, a protocol for standards of care, um, these large influx facilities, which are there because there was a, a, a larger group of people coming, quite honestly, they have no protocol on standards of care. Uh, it's a warehouse. It is a giant warehouse. Uh, and children who are there sometimes for 40, 50, 60 days, uh, and they do have relatives here. Um, the, uh, f f for me, the issue is, what are the standards of care while they're in our custody? What is the plan for discharging them, moving them to a safe placement uh, as expeditiously as possible, which is the mission of uh, Health and Human Services? What is your philosophy on immigration laws? There are some Democrats who say we should have open borders. People should be able to come in. Or should it be a little bit stricter than that? Where no, we, only need, those we need a comprehensive immigration reform. We need a system that allows for legal immigration. Uh, we need to have a process. Uh, where we uh, if, if people are here, what are, what are, what are the, uh, the requirements that they need to follow in order to become citizens uh, here. And, and you know that uh, several years ago there was bipartisan legislation in the, in the Senate overwhelming where you had when I say bipartisan you're taking a look at somebody like a Pat Leahy uh, on one side and a John McCain on the other came together and they put together a, a good bill nothing ever happened in the House of Representatives that's the direction we need to go in let's talk about the equal pay that you've been talking okay. about you've been working hard on this in yes. the House of Representatives where does that stand right now and because it's yeah. it's it's a tough road right. ahead uh, well it, it, it is but it's a very simple premise Dennis men and women in the same job deserve the same pay. You know, that happens in the House of Representatives. We have different skill sets, different parts of the country, different educational backgrounds, etc. We all receive the same pay for the same job. That's not true uh, for women in this country. Uh, uh, it's 80 cents on average on the dollar. It's a lot less for African American women. I think it's 63 cents and Latina uh, Latina is about 53 cents. It's, it really is wrong. And I don't care what profession you're in. I don't care. It, you can be a waitress, a bus driver, a news anchor, a soccer player, uh, whatever it is, a museum director. It is, it is so it's not equitable. Uh, the legislation passed the House of Representatives overwhelmingly uh, in March. And it was bipartisan. We had seven Republicans who joined us on the, on, the, uh, on the legislation. It is now stuck in the United States Senate. And, you know, I don't, you know, you, sometimes somebody says, how do you self-describe yourself? Or they'll ask me that question. Mitch McConnell has decided to d define himself as the grim reaper. He will not pass any legislation. 
I mean, this is a basic, simple economic piece of legislation that says, met, again, equal pay for equal work. And this is about a family's economics. Today, men and women are in the workforce, overwhelmingly. Women are either the primary or secondary breadwinner in their households. They deserve to have equal pay. You've worked very closely with Nancy Pelosi over the years. And, and right. Is she the face of the Democratic Party right now, or is it the squad, the so-called squad? Because they're out there, and the president is trying <laughs> yeah. to portray them as yeah. He's telling America, this is the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it was so, it's very, very exciting that last November, I mean, there was a blue wave. And uh, 40 seats flipped, were Republican or now Democrat, over 100 women in the House of Representatives. There is great diversity, there is great energy, and there are bold ideas. Nancy Pelosi is the face of the Democratic Party and open to ideas and open to, uh, uh, and, and you know, has fought all her life for the diversity that we have now. And that's energy. And, you know, I think people try to create divisions where there are not. Are there differences of opinion? You bet. Yes. So, but that's, that, that's part of the nature of the job. We all don't agree on everything together, even when we're all Democrats. But when you go out and you talk to you know, some of your more moderate constituents out there and they say, I'm concerned because the squad has come up with these ideas that just are too progressive and too expensive and they're not really necessarily it's based not, in reality. It's what not are you a telling question. Me? Look, you can, there are a number of iterations today on universal health care, okay? I have a bill that's out there, which is a very good bill. Others, the fact of the matter is that the United States Congress is debating universal health care, okay? That person in that moderate district will discuss the issue in a way that addresses the needs of her constituents, his constituents. Others will do the same in their own communities. We cannot be afraid of new ideas, of bold ideas. We can have an opinion about them, but it is, uh, uh, it really is the way we progress and do things is by having a robust discussion and conversation, which is what we are doing on health care. I want to get your opinion on the president. Do you believe sure. he's a racist? I think the president, um, I th let me just say, we have a lawless administration, Dennis, that doesn't want to move uh, any agenda. And he is so divisive that he pits people one against the other. The most recent attack on Elijah Cummings is outrageous. Elijah Cummings is, is a paragon of, of integrity. This is a man whose entire life and career has been spent on uh, uh, equity and economic justice, social reform. To, to demean uh, him, you can differ. Our politics should not be ad hominem. Our politics is, you have a view, I have a view, let's talk about it, maybe we argue about it. But it's not my personally attack you. That is what the president does. And what he does is appear to uh, to take on ethnic groups uh, and champions white nationalism. Do you think he's a racist? Uh, I think that he is divisive. I, I don't want to impugn uh, motive, but the way he talks and he acts with regard to people uh, lends itself to that that kind of, of a of a view of an opinion of him when he does take on uh, various ethnic groups and uh, stands tall for white uh, uh, nationalism and white supremacy. There are, there are some Democrats who are calling for his impeachment right now. Do you think that that's the right path or should we just wait until the 2020 election? No, I want to get rid of him in the 2020 election. Not put it that bluntly. I want to concentrate on the issues that people sent me to concentrate on. And that is their jobs, their wages, their health care, that they can afford it the cost of the prescription drugs. The single biggest economic challenge we have today is people's jobs do not allow them to keep up because of rising costs. We should have, uh, uh, there should be investigations, 
vigorous, aggressive. Let that go where it's going. On the long run, I'm going to focus on issues that I hear from people every single day about. I hear about them all the time. People don't ask me about impeachment. They ask me how they're going to be able to take care of their family. I believe the election will take care of itself, and we will have a Democratic president in 2020. What should the U.S. do with this, uh, with this trade war with China that's going on right now? Mm -hmm. I know that you were very against NAFTA, and that's being right. worked out in the Congress mm -hmm. right now. But let's mm -hmm. talk about China right now. Sure. Well, you know, I, the United States has often been schizophrenic about how we deal with China. Uh, I think China steals our intellectual property. Uh, they have in the past manipulated their currency, uh, putting the U.S. at a very, very big disadvantage. Um, and uh, their human rights uh, violations are very, very uh, well known. So I think we need a strong hand with China. Um, uh, 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 the fact is that I don't believe that the, uh, the president uh, has a trade policy with uh, uh, China. Once again, it's schizophrenic. It's uh, today tariffs, tomorrow uh, uh, a conversation, etc. Uh, and so I, I think he is not our best negotiator when it comes to the, 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 the trade uh, efforts with China. I know you said you're going to wait before you weigh in on the yes. 2020 candidates, but I will ask you this. There are about 20 Democrats running mm -hmm. for president right now. How many of them do you think could beat President Trump if he or she were the nominee in 2020? Well, the numbers are out there. and There are a number of them in the top tier uh, that in some places, and it's, they looked at this regionally, uh, 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 are taking him on. and you know, surpassing him or are, are equal to him in some of the states in which he is, uh, he has won. I, I think we have, you know, you, you, you listen to the candidates, there are bold ideas out there. They have a direction that they think we ought to go in. It's about a vision for the country. Unfortunately, the president doesn't have a vision uh, for, for, for the country, which is, um, you know, that's why we need to uh, elect someone else, and we need to elect a Democrat next year. Congresswoman Rosa Delora, always great to have you in the program. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank